Hey everybody, this is Lisa from Pressure Crisp, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a blooming onion in your Ninja Foodi. I'm actually going to start going over onions because you can't get the dahlias this time of year, which is fine. I was able to find these sweet onions at the market. As you can see, this one has more vertical height. This one's more a little short and stout. You can do it with both, but I find it easier to get an onion that's a bit more vertical. Um, it opens up nicer, so it looks more like a flower. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these just to show you the difference in what they look like. But I do want to start with the sauce first. I want to get the sauce, the dipping sauce, mixed up and put in the fridge. So it has, it won't be an hour, but it'll probably be at least a half hour to 45 minutes before you use that sauce. It gives a chance for all the seasonings to meld together and it'll taste better. So to make this sauce, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and add half a cup of mayo, half a cup of mayonnaise, put that right in a bowl. You're also going to add a quarter teaspoon of paprika, a pinch of salt, about probably a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and this is one teaspoon of the Frank's Red Hot Original Seasoning Blend. Put that in there. We're also going to add, this is about a tablespoon of horseradish. You want to do this to your taste. I prefer a little bit more horseradish than most people. This is the fresh stuff that comes in the jar. You want to press this against the sides of the glass jar to squeeze the liquid out because you don't want to add a lot of liquid to this because it will get thinner the more horseradish that you add. So just going to pop that in. And you're just going to take a whisk and you're just going to whisk this all together. But put it to taste. As you're mixing it, you can put like a teaspoon of horseradish, take it out, take a little taste of it to see if you like it. Is it spicy enough? If not, you can always add more horseradish or add more of the, uh, this seasoning blend. It's fantastic in here. So what you're going to do is take, just take a quick test. Mm. Oh, very good. You get that little bit of heat at the end, which is nice. And then this is quite thick. You can add like a little milk to thin it out if you want. I'm going to keep it this thick so it adheres to the blooming onion petals. All right. So what we're going to do, we're just going to put this in another glass jar or the presentation dish that you're going to use. Cover it, put it in the fridge so the spices have time to meld together. Next, we're going to work on the blooming onion itself. I've already cut one up just to show you what it looks like when it flowers out. It's beautiful. Look at that. Just gorgeous. I did cut a portion of the bottom off. Now, the problem is when you slice that bottom portion off, these petals or the flowering petals will come off. So you have to be very, very careful handling these onions. And I just store it upside down like that. All right, because I'm right-handed, I figured this would be better. Take a sharp knife. You're just going to chop the top off. Try to get it as level as you can. Now me, if you want this onion to stay together, you can just slice off just a tiny bit of this. Because once you, this is what holds the actual blooming onion together. Then you can slice off a bit more if you want, but the outer layer might come apart. So just push that over to the side, put that in my garbage bowl, and we're just going to peel this onion. Just take off the first layer. All right, so you want to chop that bottom so you get it as level as you can. So the outer layer is gone. You can take that little membrane off too and just toss that in the trash. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this onion, you're going to crisscross. You're not going to cut right now, I'm just showing you. You're going to cut this way, then this way. but. Let me see, I'm gonna make sure you can get this. You wanna go as close as you can, but kinda leave maybe like a quarter of an inch away from what holds this onion together. And you're just gonna cut through all the way to the bottom. I usually go directly across from that spot and make the same incision or mark, cut. There we go. And then, See what this cut is here, the cut's there and the cut's there. You're gonna go right here. Once again, get as close as you can, but you don't wanna 
cut too close. Find the mark on that side. I'm gonna find it right here and cut all the way through. Now, you're, you basically cut this in the four pieces. You have one here, one here, one there, and one here. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go in between these marks, there and there. Once again, get as close as you can. Make your cut. Now you're gonna go in between this mark and this mark right here. Well, cut, I should say. Once again, get as close as you can, cut all the way through. Move the onion, you're gonna find this mark. Oh, sorry, I skipped a piece. You're gonna find this mark, this mark. I'm gonna cut right there. And just keep doing this all the way around the onion. So find this cut, this cut, go right in the middle between those cuts. Go in between this cut, this cut. Watch your finger so it's not in the way. And while you're doing this, you wanna make sure, grip it like a ball, you wanna make sure you hold this together because you don't want these petals moving about so much because they will come or break free from what's holding it together. So you're gonna go in between this mark. There we go. All right. In between this cut, this cut. My eyes are watering. If I sniffle, I'm sorry. Between this cut, this cut. Once again, watch your thumb down below. This cut, this cut. Sorry, the onions are making my eyes water. Okay, we have a cut here and a cut there. Go in between. Cut here, cut there. Whoops. And this isn't going to be perfect, but it's gonna look really, the presentation is gonna be fabulous and it will taste delicious. You have a cut here, cut there. Whoops. Just once again, watch out for your fingers. You're gonna cut there. Okay, what you're gonna do, if you have an apple core, they say that you can do it before you actually make these cuts. I find it a little bit easier if you grip it like this. Just please be very careful and do not cut your fingers. You're gonna take a little paring knife. Now you're not gonna cut all the way through, but see this, these, this piece right here? They say like take an inch out. We're gonna see if we're gonna take this portion out right there. It's gonna go in just a bit, turn a bit. Turn your oven, onion, go in, don't go all the way through. You can actually probably hold this like this and do it so you don't impale your hand. I cut the center out, I'm trying to grip it as best I can. And what I do basically do, you're gonna take your knife, you're gonna twist it. But if you have an apple core, you can by all means go ahead and do that. But I'll show you the, um, before you make the cuts, how you can do this as well. You're just gonna take that center portion right out of there. See how you have that center piece and it doesn't go all the way through. I'm gonna set this down and see what she looks like. Once again, I find, be very gentle with these. They're very sensitive to movement. There we go. All right, this one looks pretty good. Look at that. Gorgeous. All right, we're gonna put it back together and I'm gonna put it off to the side. All right, now we're gonna take one of these short stout ones. Once again, you're gonna cut the top off. Now the bottom's gonna be prove a little bit trickier. I'm just gonna cut that stem just a little bit off. And try to get it as level as you can. Doesn't make the presentation so much nicer. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna peel this onion. All right, so we're back. We're actually gonna start taking the center out first. Once again, stick your knife in. Do not go all the way through. There we go. All right, so what I like to do, then just take your knife and go around. But if you have an apple core, it'd be fantastic to use that. I don't have one. So once again, you just make do with what you have in the house. You don't have to go out and buy an apple core to do this. And see, you have the center's gone. It's not all the way through. Perfect. Now we're gonna cut this one. I like to, I probably didn't explain it earlier that great, but you're gonna take this onion, you're gonna flip it over. You take that piece off. All right, moment of truth, we're gonna flip it over. Now this one's tighter, as you can see. Um, 
the more short and stout or short and wide your onion is, it makes for a more compact onion, blooming onion. Make sure when you do this, you buy a few onions so you can practice and play. So to get your technique down, your cutting skills on how to cut these onions. But if that fails and you do end up like, I mean, this one's still, I mean, the presentation's nice, but it's not perfect. Like you would think when you go to the restaurant to get a blooming onion. You can always take this and you can just turn it into onion petals. Tastes the same. It, the presentation is not there for a blooming onion, but it's the exact same thing. So let's move on to our coating that we're going to use. We're actually going to start off with two eggs. You're going to beat these. And you're going to add two tablespoons of milk to this. You're going to whisk it with a fork to combine it. Now you can add a bit of seasoning to this. What I'm going to do is take that Frank's Red Hot Original Seasoning and just put just a bit in. It'll just help flavor the inner part of the onion. And I think it's great. You can use Tabasco sauce. You can use that liquid wing sauce. Whatever you want to use here. All right, so I'm going to put that off to the side. And today... We're actually going to be using Hooters wing, bre wing breading. So how to coat these blooming onions. I found this to be the easiest way. Let's grab this one. We're going to set this right into this bowl. Try to separate out the petals as best you can in this bowl. All right, just like that. Because you want all this liquid to hit all the petals. And see how that is? It's opened up. So what you're going to do is, this is what I find works the best. You're going to take this egg mixture and you're just going to pour it over the onion. As best you can. Because it goes all into the nooks and crannies. Look at that. Beautiful. So we did that once. You put that fork over there. And yes, you're going to get your hands dirty here. What I like to do is grab that onion, pick it up. Once again, be careful. I'm just going to... Put it over just like that. Roll it around in the egg mixture. I'm gonna put it back into this bowl. There we go. And the egg mixture will cause it to stick together the, the onion petals. So just go ahead, take your fingers, open it up. So you're gonna take that egg mixture once again. You can wash your hands right now. You're gonna take that egg mixture again and just go over the onion as best you can. Try to get in between those petals. There we are. So we're done with the egg mixture. I'm just gonna leave that onion in there for right this second. You're gonna take another bowl right here. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna take the onion out of the egg mixture. Once again, be careful, push it to the side. You can pick it up from the bottom and kind of hold the petals together. Let me get this bowl out of the way, show you. What I'm gonna do is just tip it over like this so any excess egg will run out and there's not much excess egg. I'm going to take it, put it in this bowl. We're going to open it up. Try to open your petals. Be gentle. Perfect. All right, you can go wash your hands right now. So what I do is just take that bag of the coating, open up the petals as you're doing this, and I'm just going to sprinkle as best I can in between the petals. There. So I'm just going to pick this onion up, be careful, and I'm just going to take some of this flour, put some on the bottom, and try to work fairly quickly because the um, egg mixture will dry out. Alright, so what I've made these, I think I've made like six of these so far. So that's, we are set with that. So what we're going to do, first of all we're going to go wash our hands. Another tidbit, try not to let whatever coating mixture you're using bulk up in the center, especially around the center bulb here. Because these are petals, I'm going to try to break them up. You don't want excess flour in there because it does not cook all the way through um, with the time that we're giving it. It'll have a, like a flour taste and it's not very tasty. So we're going to take that blooming onion out of that bowl. 
shake off any excess. Be once again, be gentle. It's more you want the excess going from the center. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that blooming onion right into the tender crisp basket. Once again, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we're gonna spray it. So I'm just gonna use olive oil and you're gonna spray this onion. And once again, try to get into those nooks and crannies. That looks pretty good. Before I close the lid, I do wanna offer you an optional step because I find the Hooters wing breading not much flavor to it. So what I do is I do take some of this Frank's Red Hot seasoning and sprinkle it on top of this onion. Look at that, this is gonna be so good. All right, now we're gonna close the lid. Ninja Foodies on, you're gonna hit Air Crisp. We're gonna bring this down to 350. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. It's set for 20 minutes. We're gonna check it in 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. We're just gonna open the lid. Looking good. So let's lower the lid. All right, so we have three minutes left. I am gonna open the lid and show you what happens at this point. As you can see, the tips start to get much darker brown. At this point, you can actually lower the heat if you want to. I'm just gonna let it continue to heat um, cook at 350 because I don't mind the brown tips Okay, so we have like 14 seconds left. I am gonna open up the lid Take a look at it. You do want to take a knife or a skewer Just something just to make sure The inner onion like right here like that's a bit hard right there So you can continue cooking this I find that these blooming onions are done anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes. I'm just trying to get in there and take a look, just so you can see. See how some of that flour is not cooked in the center? So I'm going to continue cooking this. I am going at this point to lower the temp just a bit, probably down to 325. And I tacked on three more minutes of cook time, so the total cook time will be 23 minutes. 20 minutes at 350 and then the remainder three minutes at 325. All right, she's in the cool phase, she's done. I'm gonna go ahead and open it and oh my, look at that. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna take a spatula and you're gonna lift it right out, just like that. Be careful, I'm just gonna set it on a plate for right now. And look at that delicious blooming onion. As you can see, the outside onion pieces get a lot more brown, but they are delicious. The center, not as brown because they're more, they're tighter, they're more compact, but it will taste fantastic. So I am going to plate this up, get some dipping sauce, and we're gonna do a taste test. Time for that taste test. I want you to see a close up of it. There it is right there. There's some of that sauce that we're going to be dipping in. It's gorgeous, just gorgeous. But I can see why they actually take the center out because sometimes they put the cup right in the center. I didn't want to waste those onions because these onions aren't very big. When I can get Vidalia's when they're in season, I might do another one with Vidalia onions. But let's just get to that taste test. All right, we're gonna tear some pieces off here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it's still steaming. I'm gonna dip it in that lovely sauce and take a bite. Mmm. This is great. This is really, really good. Definitely go out and do this. This is delicious. The sauce out of this world, amazing. The horseradish has a nice bite to it. Just totally great.